Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you? I hope you're doing well today. Today I'm here to show you a demonstration of my 2017 favorites. I thought what better way to show you why I love them so much than to just show them in action so that you can actually see them applied and all that kind of stuff. So if you would like to see what my favorites were for 2017, please keep watching. All right, guys, this is kind of going to be a chatty get ready with me just because some of the things that I'll be using need time to sink in and all that kind of stuff. So we'll just wing it. I've already washed my face, but I didn't put on any moisturizer or primer yet because I wanted to show you what I enjoy using. Um, the very first thing I use for moisturizer, I use Purity Made Simple for my skin, my face wash. Um, and as a daytime um, moisturizer, I use Confidence in a Cream by It Cosmetics. Now, I am down to the nitty gritty and I am digging every last bit out of this bottle because, you guys, this is as expensive. If I'm not mistaken, it's like $46. And, yeah, that is a lot for me to pay. And I think I used one of these up in about three months. So, yeah. So, what I've been kind of doing, QVC carries uh, IT Cosmetics. And they do like today's special values sometimes. And they do you know, large size sales and those kind of things. So I've kind of been putting this off, kind of waiting to see <laughs> if something would come on sale, but no luck yet. And what I use when I'm out of this is the Renewed Hope in a Jar that comes along with uh, a lot of purity sets. And I really do love that, except I don't like to use it in the daytime when I'm getting ready to apply makeup because it makes my uh, primer ball up and this one does not it sinks in really fast and I think this is my last use you guys I'm gonna be depressed <laughs> but yes I have trouble um, with my primer if I don't put let that other one sink in for a really long time and most of the time I don't have a really long time especially when I'm working and I'm up at the crack of dawn and half conscious. I don't have 15 minutes to let my moisturizer set in. Sink in. I am so not awake today. I got woken up about 6 a.m. with my husband having a seizure and so I went back to bed for a little while. I'm on vacation. Um, but yeah, I'm still kind of sluggish and yuck today so bear with me. Um, my eye cream is also by It Cosmetics, and it's the Bye Bye uh, Under Eye Eye Cream. <laughs> and I really like this. Same thing, like 46 bucks. Thankfully, I got this at my birthday time, and this takes very little. And this lasts about six months at least. Uh, my birthday's in June, and I've been using it every day, twice a day since then, and I still have quite a bit of product left. So, anyway... I love this skincare, but it's very expensive. But I guess if you're going to splurge on anything, it sh should be what um, is going to protect and take care of your skin. Another thing I've been using, um, I got in an influencer box for review for free. And it's the Revitalift Sika Cream or Kika Cream. I don't even know how to say it. But since I don't feel like I got enough moisture from what was left in my confidence in a cream... I'm going to put some more of this over it on. I really do like this too. And for the same reasons, it's really emollient, moisturizing, and it sinks in quick and doesn't interfere with my primer. Okay, so I haven't had any skin issues for the longest. But now I've got Julius Caesar... Romeo and Hamlet. <laughs> I name them because once I get them, for some reason, when I get a blemish, it stays forever. And even when it's gone, a little scar stays forever. And I don't really know why all of a sudden I ended up with some, but 
on my chin area, I do have the tendency to put my hands on my face a lot, and I think that's what ends up causing that. As for in between my eyes, I would imagine it's from pulling out eyebrows. Seems like every time I pluck, I end up with these little bumpies from right in the area where I pulled out the hair. It's like it gets mad and gets in an uproar. And this, all this moisturizer might seem like overkill, <laughs> but in the winter time, my skin is seriously dry. And so I do it up big. Now, this latest lip treatment, forever, for the majority of the year, I use the lip mask, the Best Beat Lip Mask by Nicole Guerrero. But probably about two months ago, maybe, I got um, a recommendation from who? Guess. Fill in the blank. Emily Noel. And I think it's Laneige. Laneige. And it is a lip sleeping mask. And I use it at night before I go to bed, but I also use it. I put it on while I'm getting ready, and this is the best lip balm or lip mask that I've ever used. By the time, no matter how crusty my lips are, by the time I get ready for makeup, it's all sinking, it has all sink, sunken. It has all sunken in, and my lips are prepped and ready even for liquid lipstick, even for something drying. So, I really like this. So, I colored my hair last night, and it's looking really funky on camera here. And you know, one shampoo in, you never really know what color it's going to be, and your scalp is still stained a little bit. But we tried a new color. My friend Becky and I color each other's hair because we're both licensed cosmetologists. And we tried a new recommendation from my nail tech and my hair person now, uh, Victoria. Um, and we tried Redken Chromatics. And it was an experiment. I'm glad it turned out as good as it did. Um, I think even, I don't know. We'll see in a day or two. That's really the true test of what the color is going to be like once all the excess is really rinsed out and it starts to really show through. And it looks kind of crazy right now, but for now, like, I really love the color. I love the red, I love the violet, and it's enough brown that it doesn't look absolutely crazy. And even though you can't really see it, because I'm not, like, directly under the lights, when the lights are shining on it, like, there's so much dimension. There's, like, all these different shades that are all min mingled together, and it just looks so very pretty. And once I have my hair done, when I come back at the end, I'll... Hopefully, it will look a lot better than it looks now. When I'm putting on my makeup, I cannot have my hair in my face. I got this one little overboard curl that doesn't want to go up in the clip, but don't care what it looks like right now. We'll deal with it later. So, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my favorite primer. And I've been using this for a long time, but 95% of this year, I used this, Professional. And I love it because it just fills in everything so well. The only thing I don't like about it is it has a tendency to peel up. But if you rub it, like if you don't go in vigorous circles and you just kind of pat it in instead of rubbing it in, it doesn't do it as often. And if it does do it, you can take a little towel and just wipe it in the little, see it's trying to do it right now. Because I didn't give the, it's doing it. <laughs> I didn't give the, uh, moisturizer enough time to work itself in. Usually whenever I'm letting my moisturizer sink in, I'm doing my hair and I'm just doing things out of order for the sake of this video. So I'm just going to press around the areas that I put it and I'm going to take this little edge of this towel and kind of wipe off the little rolly balls. But I really like the way that it fills in my pores and it makes the really deep lines look a little, especially like my smile lines, um, look a little bit less obvious. And it just has a really nice blurring, smoothing effect. It's weird that it only peeled up in that one little area. I must have put extra <laughs> moisturizer on that part. 
and forgive me, I'm still nasally. The, the sinus part of me being sick is just hanging on. Um, on top of that, I like to go with the Smashbox Primer Water. This is my favorite. This is my favorite primer combination. This just works for me. Keeps my makeup on. It looks almost exactly the same at night when I take my makeup off as it does when I put it on in the morning. Um, I love that. It stays looking great. Um, before I learned about primers and all those things, my goodness, my makeup would be breaking down before lunchtime at work. So, but I was also a lot oilier prior to the last few years. So this is a nice refreshing drink for the skin, but it's also very moisturizing. It just gives another layer of moisture and it just preps the skin in such a pretty way. And I don't really know what it's doing, but I do notice that my skin isn't nearly as soft and isn't nearly as flawless whenever I'm, when I don't use it. It really does make a difference. I don't know what it's doing. I'm guessing maybe extra, extra moisture, but it does make a difference and it also makes a difference in how long my makeup stays on. So, man, when I turn my head and that sun hits it, it's like purple. <laughs> I'm okay with that. But, yeah, it looks like straight purple. But, anyway, I like it. And when I look at myself in the mirror right here, it looks like dark auburn. But in the viewfinder, it looks straight up purple. So, okay. All right, so foundation. Um, I could say that this was my favorite for 2017 alone. This uh, Peach Perfect by Too Faced. Soft or comfort matte foundation. I love the finish of this. I love the coverage of this. This is a perfect everyday foundation for me. I began with this one around the summertime, which is natural beige, and it got to be too dark. And then I moved to light beige, and it was perfect for a while, but now it's too dark. And so, for the sake of being able to continue to wear it, I have been mixing with Buff Beige, which is CoverGirl Outlast All Day Stay Fabulous 3-1, which this is another favorite. Um, these in combination, I like the coverage, I like the stain power, I like the finish, and I like the color. So, I just mix these two together. And I apply them, first of all, with another one of my favorites, which is, and I didn't show this in my Christmas video because it was dirty and I've used it once, but this is a Moda Rose Brush from Royal and Lang Nickel, Lang Nickel, and I got this for a Christmas present as part of a set. And so this is what I put my initial layer. Um, I spray it with um, like a daily brush cleaner spray when I get done with it and clean it on my towel. Obviously, it's stained, but um, anyways, that's what I do. I take usually about, at this point, a pump and a half of the Too Faced and about two pumps of the CoverGirl. And I just make a cocktail on the back of my hand. Okay, foundation chunk. Is it just me, or do you like foundation chunks disgust you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm really, I get sicked out by very strange things. Like, I always laugh about people talking about kids in school, about them getting sick, puking, or poop problems, or all those kind of things. I can deal with snot, and poop problems, and everything else that kids do, vomit, cough, everything else they do except I cannot deal with loose teeth that are barely hanging on that are like just barely hanging by a thread of gum tissue dude cannot they're always like Mrs. Warren look my tooth I'm like no no go away so anyway that sicks me out I use this to just kind of oh hairs um, just kind of spread it out and put just a really basic even layer of foundation all over my whole face. And then I use my beauty blender to come in and 
apply more coverage where I want it. Then I go in with a damp beauty blender. To cover up all the freckles and the dark spots and, you know, all that jazz. Now it's time to color correct under my eyes and my favorite is Tarte CC Color Corrector and again down to the nitty gritty but I love this it's the perfect color for my under eye it's very emollient just gives another layer of moisture under there so when you set it it doesn't look creepy and crazy if you've got old creepy eyes like me I think I got some right there okay but this really cancels out darkness it's a very perfect color and for concealer Everybody's favorite almost, Tarte Shape Tape. And I love these Real Techniques little mini blenders. Setting my under eye, nothing has changed. Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. It's like once I find something that works, guys, I stick with it. And I might try a few things, but if it doesn't live up to this, I go right back to this. In this combo with the da Damp Beauty Blender, I haven't found anything that makes my under eye look better than this. Um, the whole... Too Faced Peach, I think Peaches and Cream Collection. I was not excited about any of it. I was already having an attitude with Too Faced. I was so mad after the um, Natural Love palette and how crappy the quality was on that palette that I like. I was for sure not going to buy Too Faced anymore. And then I kept seeing all these recommendations for the Just Peachy Eye Palette, which I absolutely love, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but also this setting powder. It's beautiful. It's very finely milled. It has a very um, light peach undertone. It doesn't really show much color, but it really gives a really nice softness to the skin. I don't know if you can tell what color it is by the lighting, but I use a damp beauty blender to press this into my T-zone area. It does smell and taste like peaches, and it's not more of a natural peach smell. It's It doesn't bother me. And I just like this, put it everywhere with a big fluffy brush just to make sure everything's set. Anyway, what I was saying is about the smell and the taste. It doesn't, like, it doesn't linger and it doesn't, I don't notice it being there after application. Um, but a friend of mine, I ran into somebody, I can't even remember who it was now, but they gave me a kiss on the cheek and they said, you taste like peaches. Why do you taste like peaches? And then he got up and sniffed my cheek and he's like, why do you smell like peaches? And I'm like, well, you know, two-faced. <laughs> I didn't explain it all to him, you know. But I love the finish. I love the way that it really blurs out everything. It's so finely milled. It just makes everything look really beautiful. Um, and that is all the foundational stuff. 
my New Year's resolution has nothing to do with weight. I've been taking care of the weight for a long time now. Um, it has to do with when something rolls off my vanity, I'm not going to leave it on the floor. When something falls down, I'm going to pick it up. When I take something out, I'm going to put it back so that my vanity does not look like a nightmare every time I sit down to it. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. But for now, I'm doing a good job. And it probably has 99% to do with the fact that I'm at home and I'm off work and I'm not getting up at the crack of dawn trying to get ready in 45 minutes when it really takes me about an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. So, my favorite or my favorite contour and bronzer brush is the Real Techniques Multitask Brush. And I still love Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula. Um, like I said, when I find something that works, I don't mess with it. And I do try others. But it takes they have to be better for them to take the place. And nothing has been better yet. This is the perfect color for me. Perfect consistency. And it smells like heaven. Like paradise. Coconuts and pineapples and deliciousness. And somewhere that I wish that I could be. Right now. Because it is now 17 degrees in Oklahoma. And it's about 1230 so, yeah, freezing cold. All right, got some color back. Now, highlighter and blush. I have really loved a lot of blushes, but they all seem to come from the same brand, line. <laughs> anyway, they are Lorac, and you guys know how I feel about Lorac. I have all these different colors. This one is Chroma. This one is Aura. This one is Spectra. Um, I've gotten these all at various in various sets, and I really like these. Um, you barely have to use any. I see these lasting until I'm 90. So today I want something pretty unassuming, so I'm going to go for this kind of dusty rose, which is Aura. I like to start, and honestly, you just have to tap once. I like to start with blush, put on highlighter, and then go back with blush, because then it kind of blends out that line. But see, I mean, it's fully on, probably too much, and I just tapped it once. It's kind of like the consistency of their eyeshadows which is very soft and very pigmented and you don't need much and you can go overboard really quick like I just did but you'll see after I get all of my face products on I go over with the brush that has a little bit of translucent and it kind of chills everything out a little bit. For highlighters I just really don't know any company that does highlighters better and that's Ofra. Um, my two favorites are Beverly Hills, which is kind of like a bunch of squares, or a bunch of squares, a bunch of triangles of different shades. You can mix them all together, or use them separately, and Rodeo Drive. And out of these two, Rodeo Drive is my favorite. It is just, it's gold, but it has a cut more of a champagne undertone to it, and it's, it's golden, but it doesn't look like harsh gold, and I love it. I really use this one more for inner corner highlight and brow bone highlight than I do actual highlighting on my cheeks, but I do really still love this. But Rodeo Drive is is the one for me. And I'm using this Smashbox um, fan brush that came with the Casey Holmes set. I guess I should be talking about my brushes. Um, the blush one is a Morphe S13, an angled contour brush, really, but I use it for blush. Holy cow. 
when I talk and put product on the brush, I keep tapping because I'm showing you that I'm doing it. And then I go way overboard like that. But like I said, I'll smooth it out. I like to go with my finger on my cupid's bow and on the bridge of my nose. And then use the brush for the tip of my nose and my chin. All right, so I'm gonna go with my big brush, like I said, and just blend everything, smooth it all out, chill it out. Okay, so setting sprays. These are the two that I've used the most that have been my favorites this year. The NYX Dewy Finish um, Long Lasting Setting Spray and then the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. Now before I found this, this was my use it for everything. But now that I've found this, I don't want to put this on twice because it has a ton of sheen in it. And so, but I do like to set everything after I'm done with my foundational stuff before I put on my eyebrows. And so I like to use this as an in-between step. It just knocks all the powdery, powderiness off and sets it and makes it look more like skin. So actually one more step before I get to that. And that is I like to go ahead and uh, prime my eyelids. And this is a new to me in 2017 thing. I got it on my birthday and this is Mac Painterly Paint Pot. And again, another use for the little mini blender. I really love this. It just, I love it because it cancels out all the discoloration. I love it because it is the a consistency that's not thick and doesn't crease. Like it doesn't crease before I set it. It doesn't like immediately start creasing, which I like that. The color is perfect for my skin tone. It just matches up with my skin perfectly. And it just gives a really nice blank canvas to start the eyeshadow. It's like the color of my skin isn't going to interfere with the color payout of the shadow. This just kind of gives a blank ca canvas and I love that. Um, to set this, I either use translucent powder or Wet n Wild Creme Brulee eyeshadow, which looks like that and which costs a buck. <laughs> so I usually use that. I'm using a Coastal Scents BRC N42, just a big fluffy brush to set this. Now, I'll go in with the next Dewy Finish Setting Spray. And this pretty fan that my dad brought me from Japan 20 years ago is a favorite because I don't have to wait and I don't have to look crazy doing this. It dries everything really fast. And so I save the cover FX for later. Now, it's eyebrow time. And I have tried many different eyebrow products this year. So I went back to my micro brown chocolate. It just matches my hair. It matches my skin the best. Um, and that's been the best for me. Uh, I continue to use the Brow Envy by Too Faced. Again, colors, formula, perfect for me. I hit pan on the lighter one, but the other one's still holding strong, but this is still gonna last me forever. Um, and to set, I have tried Gimme Brow. It's okay, but I like the NYX Tinted Brow Mascara. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm, sti I'm sticking with what works for me. All right, I use various brushes, angled brushes mostly. These are both, this is Morphe. Uh, PK45. I like it because it's pink and it's broad. Um, this is just a 
angled liner brush from some various set. And this is a Morphe M158 spoolie and angled brush combination. So start off by brushing through them. Let's get these eyebrows on. Like a broken soul in a wonderland without angels This is how I feel when the mirror shows me a stranger Yeah And I know they're just fragments of a world where you're absent All I get to see Okie dokie, eyebrows, long, intensive process. <laughs> so we're going to go into talking about eyeshadow palettes. It's going to be hard for me to condense these because I've used several and loved several, but I think I'll do my top three and use them all in some capacity. All right, most of this will come as no surprise. First and foremost, Jaclyn Hill palette. Top five of all time favorite palettes. Next was a surprise. I did not think that I would actually love this as much as I do. Um, just Peachy by Too Faced. All mattes, beautiful warm colors, beautiful fall colors. You know, matte fall perfection in my opinion. And then the other one I got just kind of because I love Candy Johnson and because I wanted to support her, um, but the I Want Candy palette. Um, there's a lot of beautiful colors in here, a lot of cool combinations. My favorite really is this one here, um, and I love these three. Highlight, or uh, shimmery highlight, matte, one yellow toned, one pink toned, and perfect for setting, and I did it completely backwards. That's the uh, highlight, the shimmery highlight, and these two are the matte. Um, but I really love this palette, and I'm gonna start off with this palette. Um, I'm gonna use a BH Cosmetics 102 Concealer Brush. This is my favorite for brow bone highlighting, and I'm just gonna start there this time, and I usually don't, but I'm going to today. Um, I'm going to go back and forth between these two shades, the yellow toned and pink toned uh, highlight shades, Banana Cream Pie and Ice Cream. And I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way under my eyebrow just to clean it up and highlight my brow bone. I'm going to pull that down a tad. Now I'm going to go into the just peachy and the Jaclyn Hill palette to do, I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to start like I usually start, which is with Silk Cream and MFEO and Jaclyn Hill. These are my favorite. This combination of these two are my favorite transition combination. And my BH Blender, my favorite blending brush for, um, transition. I'm now going to go into the Just Peachy palette with the Morphe M511. And I'm going to go into this color here, which is called Peach Cobbler. 
And I'm going to put that in the upper crease. Guys, whenever I saw this palette the first time, I thought, you know, just another matte neutral, warm matte neutral palette. And I was completely underwhelmed by it. But man, um, you know, imagine this. Emily Noel was raving about it. She showed some of the most beautiful warm eye looks I had seen. And I was just like, okay. You know, and I'm, I've am i gotten to the point where I'm really not, I really don't give in to hype as much as I used to. And I really don't, you know, feel obligated to buy every new thing. And I know my collection and I've decluttered it enough to know what I have and what I don't have. And I'm really trying to limit myself to things that have unique shades that I don't already have 15 of. And so I've been really good about that this year and I'm actually really proud of myself because I used to just buy everything that came out and I would keep it all and just think you know half of it I would never touch or I would give away so it's like what's the point point? and that's why I started my stash shopping series because I want to use what I have and when you have a rather large collection which mine is small in comparison to a lot I've seen but it's large in regard to, you know, having so much that it's not all out and visible, it's put up into storage, and I don't always know. I don't reach for things because they're put away. And so that's the reason why I started this stash shopping. In fact, I need to do that for January, probably tomorrow or Tuesday. But anyway, we've got a warm base down now, and I think... I'm going to use this same brush and go into Just Right, which is a beautiful plum shade. Actually, I think I'm going to get a smaller, the same shape brush. This is a Morphe PK36. And I'm going to use that and go directly into my crease with this. My actual socket. So I'm beginning to control myself and I did a lot of damage over Christmas but you know that's the time of year when there's so many sales that I can get a bunch of stuff to try and review for my channel. Um, not an excuse really but just as you know an investment into my channel. At this point you know it's still all out of my own pocket. I hope someday it won't always be that way but for now. You know, I'm investing into myself, I'm investing into my dream, I'm investing into my channel. Um, no excuses. <laughs> I just, you know, take advantage of times when things are on sale, when there are discounts and coupons, and try to get things that either people have shown interest in or I have interest in. I also do a lot of research before I actually buy things. I don't really do things on the fly anymore. I make very informed and intentional decisions about what I buy. I'll often make a wish list and then when I have time go and watch reviews on the things that I'm interested in from the people that I trust and go check out what they think of something before I consider it if they tell me that it's crap then I mark it off my list. Sometimes I change my mind. Sometimes I see a look or somebody else convinces me that it's worth my, my money. But most of the time, the people that I trust were kind of in the sa on the same page makeup wise. I love the way that looks. I love that combination. This just ripe color is just beautiful. All right, I'm going to go back with the one I used before and just go in tiny circular motions and just blend those all together, or at least those two colors together. And then with the beginning brush, go around the outside to regain that warmth. 
Okay, that's a good beginning. Um, at this point, before I go any darker and before I start thinking about lid, I'm going to go ahead and do my lower lash line. I'm going to first with the small crease brush by Makeup Geek, going to go into the peach, actually into the Just Ripe shade and go right up next to my lash line with it. Two thirds of the way across, and then I'm going to use my BRC N09 by Coastal Scents, and I'm going to go into Peach Cobbler. This is a looser, fluffier brush, and I'm going to go right underneath that and pull it down below and blend out that darker color with it and go all the way across with it. And I'm going to clean that off with my color switch and go ahead and do my inner corner with a whipped cream in the I Want Candy palette. Alright, so husband having a seizure break. Sorry about that. Um, going back into the Peachy Mattes with the Morphe M507, which is a tiny little blender brush. And I'm going to go into Chocolate Dipped, which is this darkest brown, and just place that on the outside of my outer V. Just to darken this up a bit. the big 511 and blend this out and forward. I'm going to go in with the BRC N06 by Coastal Scents and just get a little more vigorous with the blending. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. Actually not. I'm going to go in with a little more of that color with this brush and just try to fill in where it's a little bit patchy. All right, that's better. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and... Um, do the next favorite, which is the Stila uh, Magnificent. I think this is called Magnificent Matte. Wait, <laughs> Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. So I'm going to go from here in. I'm going to use this brush to pull it to kind of spread it out once I get it there. But I'm using the shade Smoldering Satin. take my crease brush and just kind of run along that edge to make sure that it doesn't look like a harsh line. It kind of does, but <laughs> running out of time. I got to be at church soon.
Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go in with this brush and just kind of merge those two together. I love that product and I love the smoldering satin. I think it's just beautiful. So a little bit of that falls out when you start messing with it once it's dry. Um, like I did with this going in the crease. But nearly nothing compared to regular glitter. I'm going to go ahead and curl my eyelashes with my favorite Tarte eyelash curler. And find my Kat Von D Tattoo Trooper Liner to make a wing. favorite mascaras for bottom lashes is MAC X R MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash and Lash Accelerator by Rimmel. I'm going to use Rimmel today. It's not giving me the impact I want, so I'm going to go in with the other. And for upper lashes, I have really been loving Roller Lash by Benefit to start and then Tardis Lash Paint to finish up. And since I'm prepping for falsies, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on my upper lashes, just getting them black and separated. All right, so the eyes are basically done. I want to show you my favorite lashes, which are the um, Christina Wispies or Demi Wispies. My other favorites are the Little Black Dress by Kiss Couture. Um, but I'm going to do these today. I'm going to do these off camera. Since I had a little hiatus, I'm going to go off camera and get this done, do something with my hair, and put it on the lashes, and then I'll come back for the lip color. All right, my hair is sort of done. It needs some finishing touches, but for now. Um, I want to talk about my favorite lip liner and one of my favorite formulas of liquid lipsticks. So the first is the Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner. This is in Dolly Danger, and I just really like these really fat <laughs> lip liners, so I'm gonna go in with this. I like to go into the corners and go in a little heavy with this. And then um, Bare Minerals Gin Nude, this is the shade Slay. Go into center with this and kind of make it a little ombre-ish. Mm, I really love that combo beautiful and I love every shade of this actually all right final step before I go finish doing all the little things and come back to you but going in with the cover effects illuminating spray you have to shake it up really well and it's beautiful it gives a beautiful shade to the skin and sets everything very nicely And dry that. I've got little droplets. Hopefully those won't show after it dries. <laughs> All right, so 
This is the look I came up with with all my 2017 favorites. Here's a close up for the eye. How beautiful is that Stila glitter? I just absolutely love it. It's a much easier way to deal with glitter than, you know, the alternative. So I will be right back with my finishing thoughts. Got to get some jewelry and perfume and all that jazz. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning about what my 2017, what year is it again? <laughs> my 2017 favorites were for this year and how I use them and how they're applied and just seeing them in action. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. It is New Year's Eve day, so I'm wishing you a very happy 2018. Um, let's go out there and kick butt and take names. What do you say? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, take care and God bless. Bye, guys. Happy New Year. Like a broken soul in a wonder